Once again, we want to say welcome to Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Jai, and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. For the month of July, we're going to be studying deeply about our own country, Liberia. So for tonight, our topic is the Liberian Act and Culture. And I pass it on over to uh, my co-host, Danielle Nangos Kushak, who will take it up from me. Danielle, it's all yours. Thanks, Dennis, and thank you to our audience. Thanks for joining us. As Dennis said, tonight we will be discussing Liberian arts and culture. Um, before we get started, I would like to encourage you to please like our Facebook page, Focus on Liberia, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, also named Focus on Liberia. Tonight, our guest is Dr. Joseph Bagba. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about our guest tonight, he began his career as an artist and scholar with more than 38 years of experience in playwriting, directing, acting, and teaching in Liberia, West Africa. He was also an advocate of social justice and child welfare on the continent of Africa and here in the United States where he works as a social worker, excuse me, where he works as social work services manager too with the Department of Human Services in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania since 2003. Dr. Bagba was born in the city of Monrovia, Montserrat County, Liberia. Both of his parents are descendants of the royal household of the Nian dynasty of Crown Kings from the Chan Kron group of Liberia. Following his graduation from high school, Dr. Baba enrolled at the University of Liberia. He worked, while there, he worked briefly with the Blamondon Theater Workshop in 1975 and 1976 before he founded his own theater company, Deconti Artist Theater Inc. DATI in 1977 at the University of Liberia. Dr. Bagba's days at the University of Liberia constitute some of his most creative days as a controversial playwright and dramatist. He affiliated with the Student Unification Party, SUP, of the University of Liberia, and he wrote socio-political dramas, poems, satires, such as Wata Police, No More Hard Time, Chains of Apartheid, Zon, Nina Tai, Ya, and the Disappointed Gama, among others. During the period between 1977 and 1979, in the life of this playwright, he met two very important Liberian scholars and artists that made a great impact on his career as a writer and educator, the late Honorable Bai T. Moore, Liberia's cultural guru, and the renowned Liberian feminist, politician, and Congresswoman Melinda Jackson Parker. Dr. Baba received his Bachelor of Arts in English in 1980 and then matriculated at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro in 1981. He earned a Master of Fine Arts degree in theater in 1983 and then returned to Liberia to get married to Mrs. Araminta H. Port Baba in the gorgeous city of Vanga Bong County. Joe and Araminta have been married 29 years now. More than that now. More than that now? <laughs> yes, it's 30, 36. Okay, 36 years. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Praise God. Yes. Here in the U.S., Dr. Bagba has worked odd jobs as an assistant manager of the Parkway Parking Garage, Therapeutic Staff Support, TSS, and as a mental health worker, three, with various local agencies in the Philadelphia area for many years in order to bring his family over to the United States. Dr. Bagba also worked with the School District of Philadelphia as a special education teacher in a learning support classroom for two years in 
violence prone environments in Philadelphia before he was employed at the Department of Human Services as social work services manager too. During this period, Dr. Vava enrolled at the prestigious Jesuit institution, St. Joseph's University, where he earned a master of science degree in elementary and special education in 2002 and a doctor of education degree in educational leadership in 2009, respectively. So to Dr. Bagba, we say welcome and thanks for being here. Thank you so much for, for the recognition. You know, sometimes people think you can just rise up to the top, but on silver platter, but it's not like mm -hmm. that. That's where the dignity of labor comes in. That's where dedication comes in. That's where a sense of direction comes in. So thank you very much for that introductory um, uh, uh, piece that you, you did so very brilliantly. You were able to, to, to pronounce certain names and, and, and words that I thought our knuckles wouldn't have been able to pronounce <laughs> like that, right? Right, right, I tried. Not I tried. really, you know, we, we're all interactive now, you know, we, we, we're interacting, so, so it's no surprise. I'm not even surprised because yeah, okay. you have a lot of people around Liberia. It's your home. We are all one people. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things I'm here to say tonight as well, that to all Liberians, for them to understand that Prince Joseph Tomo Galode Baba Senior says that I want all Liberians to hug one another Tell your brothers and sisters, I love you. Please, that's my appeal to you. And I want you to heed my advice. I've begun some programs in Liberia and we're talking about them tonight. Peace and reconciliation is what we want. And I will do all I can to assist the Liberian government and people for us to promote peace and reconciliation through the performing and visual arts and literacy We'll go to villages and then to teach people how to read and write their names at least so they can be able to cast their ballots and make informed decisions at the ball, I mean, the ballot of uh, uh, polls. That's very important for a nation like this. We cannot right. continue to live in ignorance, in the darkness. As a, a graduate of the University of Liberia, our, our, our emblem is Lux in Tenebri. Light in darkness. That's what Liberia is to Africa. That's what Liberia is to the black world. We are descendants of the children of Israel. Liberia is the Israel of the black race. It's important for us to understand that. How dare we tell our backs at the Lord, our God, the God of our patriarchs, to do things that we're not supposed to do to one another. How dare you glamorize violence and mayhem and atrocities in a blessed land like Liberia that God blessed. Nobody colonized us because of the power of God, the God our fathers believed in when they came from the east and traveled westward to where we are today. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk about culture tonight. Right. And thank, thank you, Mr. Ba Dr. Baba, for, for coming, for honoring our invitation to be here. We want to say uh, thank you so much for coming and want to welcome our viewers on Facebook Live. We are dedicating, as I said earlier, the entire month of July, which is the independent month of Liberia, that we, deep di we take a deep dive into who we are as Liberians. And so we are so honored to have Dr. Joseph Tumo. Gladule Baba, to introduce this all-important series. Back to you, Danielle. Yes, um, as Dr. Bagla said, uh, it's definitely been a journey for him. So in the beginning, I've only touched on parts of his journey. Um, there's so much to his story, and I really hope we have enough time to get into a lot of those steps in your journey tonight. Um, but to start um, and to help our audience, uh, Let's start off with the definition and defining arts and culture and, and how the two intertwine. So 
how would you define arts and culture, Doctor? Oh, great. Arts and culture. Mm -hmm. Even though it's culture, but to put it into a proper perspective, you will start with culture. Mm -hmm. Culture. Culture is, um, is uh, related to civilization. Civilization. Civilizations are built around cultures, like the Nile Delta. That Nile Delta uh, uh, presented a culture. When the Nile overflowed, there were many riches that came. And as the, as the, as the flood sus, I mean, succeeded, then uh, uh, there were discovery of riches and all of that. So, so the first thing, the universal concept is culture. Then art will be a subset of culture. So first we start with culture and we say it's, it's a way of life. A way of life is the simplest way to define culture, a way of life. So if, if you get out in the morning <laughs> And you eat Quaker oats, and you from Quaker oats, you you go uh, 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 in your garden, and you play your garden, and after that, after your garden, you come home with your family, you sit down and eat, and all of that. The next day, you go and do it. That that's a routine that you are that you have developed. So it's it's a it, it, it becomes a way of life for you. Okay. So, um, in in a different sense, people develop different life patterns, beliefs, and concepts. You you Daniel got your own concept about life. Oh man, if I ask, started asking you now, you will tell me how you're going to go to Pluto and come <laughs> back and go this place and that place. You know, you got your own idea, so does or uh, uh, Dennis. Right now, as I'm talking, Dennis is sitting right here thinking what well, your own ideas to come up with something, you know? So all of those things combine to make culture. Because now, uh, even though Daniel has her own unique thoughts and Dennis has his and I have mine, now we gotta blend all our thoughts to create of Liberian culture. So, so when, when you want to promote Liberian culture, for instance, then you have to be inclusive. You got to do the Congo, you got to do the Pele, you got to do the Va, you got to do the Kran, you got to do the Kisi, you got to do the Kyo, the Mantingo, Bandi, you know, Va, Gola, Tewion, Bele, you know, Crown, crew, Gribble, Basa, everything. Then that's Liberian culture. So tonight, the culture that I'm talking about with respect to Liberia inculcates all these different thoughts, different ways of life and thinking and philosophies and all of that. That's why it's important for us to be united so that we can learn from one another. We can celebrate our diversity. Mm -hmm in a more meaningful way. I can learn some fellow songs that I can sing and entertain people and make some money and at the same time make people feel happy and at the same time promote a Liberian culture. Mm -hmm. So that that so so that's that that's culture. That's culture. But in the culture there are people who are crafty. There are people who weave. There are people who sew. There are people who dance. There are people who sing. There are people who, who carve. Mm -hmm. So now you come into the art part of it, and I come to the artistic part of it. Now we're talking about creativity. That's where art comes in. Art is the work of you know creative, is a, a creative process. So guess what? Danielle, you are a work of art, girl. <laughs> you know that? 
Oh, you see that? You really know that. Uh -huh. You see? So sometimes when people think about art, they don't think about themselves. I'm a work of art. Well, if you if you call Joe Baba Dina, everybody will say, oh my God, that man, this is that blah blah. Because mm -hmm. I'm just unique. Mm -hmm. And have been having a ball since uh uh, uh what's that? Heck was a pop. Now he's a great big old dog. <laughs> you see, that's our Liberian culture. That's how we converse. That's how we make fun. Mm -hmm. That's how we tell our story. That's who we are. We're not the kind of violent people and barbaric type of people that, that we're being portrayed as not know. We didn't grow up like that. We grew up in civilization. We were cultured. We, has, we were civilized. And what does it mean to be civilized? Man became civilized when he started building towns and villages to live together for the common good. That's part of the culture. That's the development of mankind, development of culture. And guess what? All that began here on, I mean, Africa. So we are doubly blessed. We are children, uh, 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 descendants of the, 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 the first created, I mean, human beings God made. And we're not making good use of it. Everything the people learn from us, even the, the West Indians who destroyed the, the, the library of Alexandra and all those kinds of things, they still learned from us. They still are continuing to learn from us. They live on our resources, our minimal resources. How blessed we are. All these minimal resources and all of that. And people starve to death in Africa. People shoot and kill one another. So culture is the overall, you know, um, uh, cover for the way of life. The way how we live our life. That Liberian way of life. Guess what? Look how our Liberian culture looks today. We are glamorizing criminals. We are glamorizing uh, 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 crimes, mayhem, atrocities. You're looking at somebody like Kaya Maya Pa and you, and you say honorable so so and so and you get in line and vote for somebody like that. Don't you have a conscience? You cannot have a conscience unless you are cultured. That's why culture is important. Mm -hmm. Yes. That conscience is important because the conscience makes you to be aware of the fact that you're not the only human being. Daniel is a human being too, like you. Respect her. Dennis is a human being, like you. Respect him. I'm a human being, respect me, just how you want me to respect you. That's civilization. That's culture. So rule of law comes into it now because you talk about culture, you got to talk about governance. You got to talk about language. You got to talk about education. You got to talk about health. You got to talk about economy, industry, this, that. That's the culture. So, so that's, that's, that's to do that one there for you. And, and of course, I think you saw the difference as I made it. Uh, uh, I told you that culture was the overall thing. And then the right. art is the creative thing that you do. So sculpturing, mm -hmm. somebody looks at something and he admires it. He says, oh my goodness, this thing that looks so good. But for me, I may be able to describe it in words and all of that literally because I'm a playwright, you know, I can write. But then, uh, uh, Dennis, uh, uh, um, still on the, on, the, on the farm so much, he used to, he and the papier then used to carve things and all of that. So Dennis is able to say, oh, you know what? This thing, this image you're talking about like this, I can take a wood and chop it all the day, it will be just like this. He said, okay, then let's try it. You go, chop, 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 chop. You look at the thing and it looks like that. Just how the sculptors do. You know, we have some sculptors, great sculptors in Liberia. Uh, 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 Erskine, uh, uh, Gus Erskine, uh, 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 Vanja Riches. Great sculptors. They just fix your face and look at it that they created. That's art. So, so then we say, you are artistic. That means you, you are creative. 
you are yourself. And to be an artist, you don't have, you don't have to be like everybody else. And you know me for that. When I get ready, when I jump play, I jump play. <laughs> I feel the way I want to feel. Why? Because who saw who and who saw what? That's the culture, the language, mm -hmm. those expressions. They are completely different from, from other people from around the world. When you speak, people who have traveled to Liberia will say, excuse me, sir, are you from Liberia? See, yes. I say, why? Well, because that accent, mm -hmm. we have a beautiful accent we don't even know we hit ourselves. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? That's culture, love, patriotism. I should love you just as you should love me. That's why you call patriotism, that's what we patria, the, 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 the gift, the land that our fathers and our mothers left for us. They, they give it to us. They, they preserve it. White men didn't come there, they didn't do anything to it. We were born free. That's why they call us Liberians. You don't even know the definition of your own national or, or, or nomenclature. Okay. Dr. Baba, you, you keep stressing uh, you know, patriotism, education, governance, all these things. You say they are part of culture. Yes, they are. I mean, but are they different from one country to the other? or Because sometimes oh, yes. we talk about culture, African culture. Culture, excuse me, uh, uh, just to answer your question right there to get it straight. It's a culture, as I told you before, I, I told you about Danielle having her own thoughts and all of that, you having yours and all of that. So if we in Liberia have our own type of culture, what do you think about people in the African coast? They can, yeah. it, I mean, we may have similar, you know, linguistic connection and all of that, but the gribble people in, in the African coast will behave a little differently for our gribble people we got in Liberia, you know, yeah. and the language they speak, there's a variation in the mm -hmm. in the language, how they speak it, and all of that. So there will always be differences, as there are individual differences as well. So, so yeah. let's go to art. I know you touched on it a little bit, so we can get the different forms of art. I, you talk of fine arts and all those different. So just walk us through all these different subcategories. Uh, well, uh, uh, what's that? You got sculpturing. You got a uh, 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 painting. You got drawing. You know, uh, you got weaving. Uh, dance. You see the performing arts. You know the the arts. You know different arts. As I told you, you got dance. You got fashion. Uh, uh, you got um, <coughs> uh, uh, what's that? the theatrical way how you you know present your ideas and communicate your entertainment is an art all by itself you know so there are different different you know uh, ways in which art is uh, categorized and appreciated uh, some people are visual so they will more, you know, uh, likely, you know, relate to visual arts. Some people are uh, audio, so acoustics and, you know, uh, electronics, you know, musical sound, I think, will be things that they will engage into. But they will engage into it when they have the, when they have the talent. Now, talking about art also, you must talk about Innate, innate talent, innate talent. Innate talent is something like two kids were born, you know, uh, but, uh, what's that? Uh, uh, Tamba, who plays soccer. You go on the field, Tamba, dribble, everybody, everybody falling down on the ground, all that kind of thing. It's, a, it's an art that you and myself don't know. We don't know why he's doing it, he jumping up like that and doing like that. But it's kinesthetic, you know. He moving. Some people got a body motion to do like that. So, 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 so that in itself is an innate talent that people have, and they excel in it. And I gave you an example, like, like, like uh, President George Weah. George Weah, uh, that, 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 that,
you know, when you go there, you just fake you like this, you think, whoa, you can't just you not waste that one again. So, so we have fun, you know, we have fun with that. that but that's his talent, that's his innate talent, and that's an art, you see. So, so, so when you're talking about art, what you're talking about is, is man's appreciation for the imitation of life. Any little thing that you see that you appreciate, it's a work of art. What is beautiful to, to Dennis may not be beautiful to me. It's a city where how people hook up together, you know what, that love, loving and, and, and building up human relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend thing, all that emotional stuff, that's an art. That's an art. How how are you able to, to pair off with somebody who's from a different family, different background, and you can make it, and for instance, in my case, if we live together for 36 years and all of that, peacefully have children, grandchildren, all of that. That's a craft. Art, craft. Craft is also another word that is aligned to art, because in order for you to create an art, you must have the craft. The craft is that gentle touch that you put to something that makes it look a little more, you know, appetizing, artistically appetizing, you see? Or not just only artistically appetizing, but sometimes it can be emotionally appetizing, you see, and so forth. But then the other thing that you want to remember is that art is so awesome that it affects us emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, etc. It, 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 it arouses those kinds of inner feelings within us. What makes you dance when you hear the song? Do boom, 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 boom. What makes you do that? Mm -hmm. The art is, is, is penetrating you. It's permeating you. It's touching you. They beat the drum, you know, the, the people dancing, uh, uh, um, they, they beat the drum, the people dancing. What makes you do that? That's the power of art. It's important. And maybe later on, you know, I will put one music on my beat playing. You can hear it, then I'll do a little dance for you guys, okay? <laughs> okay. It's not guaranteed now, I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, All right, so, so, yeah. so that's, that's, that's art. Okay, different from uh, your founder of the uh, decorative artist theater. Tell us about that and what are some of its activities. Thank yes. you for that. <laughs> decorative artist theater was established 42 years ago. 42, 42 years ago. But before that time, I received a calling I was in high school in my senior year, 1974. That's when I really started because that's when I received that calling. And I went one night, we're in the, uh, you know, dorms, you know, actually we're in cabins with uh, at Carroll High. So on top of the mount, you know, a little uh, range of uh, part of the Nima Mount, grass field. That's where our campus was. And this morning, you know, uh, maybe like two something going to three. Cool money. I just heard Joseph. Joseph. I was like half awake, you know. And I woke up. I was, and I looked around. All my all my housemates, they were all sleeping. So I wonder who are calling Joseph, Joseph like that. You know, went back to bed again. And then it happened. But those days when we were in school. We were taught the Bible. I could say a lot of Bible verses when, when my brain was fresher. Right now, I don't know. At least I know John 3, 16. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave the only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Right? Right. Come on, why are you so quiet, man? Tennessee, that's nothing. <laughs> You're just smiling. <laughs> That's the power of art. Mm -hmm. The power of art, you have to have life. 
the arts culture provide life, gave you life. Mm -hmm. When I was doing that dance, what made me to do that dance? Because I started thinking about the spirits of my forefathers. Mm -hmm. I, I, gained, I, I gained my inspiration from them. You see? So you got to have places, I mean, things that will, will, give, will give you that momentum for you to be able to express the art. Like the way I'm doing that, I guess people look at me and say, but what the other like red puppy coming from tonight? So he just wasted it like that. <laughs> you call me Satya. See, see, Satya. Okay? Yo, yo. 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 So, Dr. Baba, you were talking about the country artists. What are some of the activities? So, so. That's how it started. So when I, after I got off that, that drink the second time, then I remember that in the Bible, Samuel and Eli, mm -hmm. God had called Samuel when Samuel was asleep. When Samuel woke up, he thought Eli had called him. So he went to Eli, Eli the first time. Eli said, no, the second time when he went, Eli said, when you hear your name again, say, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. And I remember that first. And I, I went back to sleep with the expectation that that would happen and it happened. I heard Joseph. When I woke up, the vision I had, I wrote a play called Life Story of Kakula. And guess what, everybody? Let me tell you this thing. that God uses people for a specific reason. I wrote that play because uh, during those days, in the 70s and all of that, the Congo easy business and the country this and that were not easy. I'm telling you, sometimes you couldn't even carry your own indigenous name because uh, you were made to be ashamed of who you were. You had to carry other uh, 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 settler names in order for you to go to school, to live a good life, and or to be involved in whatever uh, uh, governmental stuff they were doing and all of that. So it was during those days that I was coming up and being born in Morovia and growing up among all the different families and different classes and all of that, you know, that left a lasting imprint on my mind. So fortunately for me, God gave me the power and I wrote the play. So my first play was about integration of the Liberian people. And I still pursue that dream to today. But guess what? After I wrote that play nine years later on, I began the Kekula that God made me to write about the indigenous man that married an American Liberian. Oh, hill, Liberia, hill, oh, hill. So that, that is now real Liberian stuff. Okay? No more Congo, no more country. We all are intertwined, we want people. That's the Liberian, that's the Liberian history we are going to promote. Moving forward, anybody who comes and speaks on the contrary is an enemy of the Liberian people and Liberian nation. Selfishness must stop. Patriotism must take its rightful seat in Liberia. Amen, amen, man, from the corner. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Now move on. Yes. Yeah, so um your your theater, Deccan T. Yeah, so, uh, so then it. after that, came to the University of Liberia and hey my people, I don't know what to say about the, the students at the University of Liberia and what they did for me. They raised me up. I went there with my creativity, my artistic prowess, and with the instruction. In fact, let me give credit to Carroll High School. Carroll High School was one of the best secondary schools on the continent of Africa. Our curriculum was uh, 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 on par with the curriculum in England and all of that because we had English and Irish, you know, uh, Christian brothers, Catholic school. Uh, so the book basically was not easy. And they used to discipline us too, like a, like an army uh, 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 barracks. That's how we used to live. Give us that training. 
So, but at the University of Liberia, the first time I came there, I started writing my little poems and things you know, like Water Police. You know, those days they had this, you know, um, uh, uh, little common saying around the city, you know, some of the girls that used to hustle on, on, on Gurley Street and all of that, you know, they used to call them Water Police. So then the first kid guys there, uh, when the when girls are going, they will have a whistle of blowing, free, free. There's somebody on the other corner will say, what the police? <laughs> so that was a that was that was a work of art right there for me. So that helped me to to develop a poem. So I wrote this poem, it was called Water Police. I said, Wake up, water police. It's so time for you to be on the street. You know, and like that, and I acted uh, on TV and made that went viral. So mm -hmm. then everybody began to see that I had some literary skills and whatnot. Then at the University of Liberia, uh, uh, I was uh, a freshman of uh, '76. I was elected president of the freshman class because trust me, now look look at my age. I see a citizen. I look like this. <laughs> then what you think when picking or picking? You see what I'm talking about? <laughs> so, but anyway, my colleagues elected me president. When they elected me president, because I already produced my first play, you know, in Yekepa at the Open Door Theater. So I have more experience. So, so then at that time, the, the, the masses were suffering. So this thing about massacre and all of that was a thing that was developing in the culture. The political, social culture, economic culture of Liberia, and mm -hmm. and 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 uh, it was during Thomas time. Now you see, okay, let's let's talk about era. So what's happening? You got to talk about the era because you remember I talked about the governance and as part of the culture. So mm -hmm. now uh, Thomas era, it was he was more rigid. He was very rigid and and it was very dictatorial as well. Uh, but he was um, despotic. A uh, 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 type of leader. So his era was different. His era, you, when you talk, you go to Bella Yala. You know, when when Toba Ong, when Toba got there, his era, he was more liberal. Right. He even invited all the young ones that came with their little high heads, and some of them got no sense, and he put them on silver platter. And they ended up insulting him, undermining the government, doing all kinds of things, promoting socialism, communism, all kinds of right. different, different yama yama. Those people were doing the place. Before we lose track of the uh, Dekonti artists, because I want us to talk about the activities you're doing now as part of Dekonti artists. So, so Dekonti artists, to come with Dekonti artists, I want, I'll, I'll tell you the way that I went there. So the, the mm -hmm. freshman class, in the freshman class, I produced a play called No More Hard Times. No More Hard Times was, was a satire. Mm -hmm. A satire is where uh, a literary work in which you ridicule the society. So during this time, people suffering and all of that, you know, and you say, and you say no more hard time, it, 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 it rings a bell and it tells a story. So we did that one. And then the following year, 1977, that's when I organized the country artist theater because I wasn't president anymore. Because I, as president of the freshman class, I wrote the play. I, I created a dramatic club in the class. Wrote the play and we traveled to to Nimba. We went to to Maryland and all. And in Maryland, we had a wonderful time. The people in Maryland they have a lot of educated people. In Maryland, in in, in Harper, in Harper City. And in those days, uh, 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 what's that? T. Bolton, Bolton Williams was supervisor of schools and all of that. And he went to my play at the uh, Harper City Hall. Uh, 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 and the play was about uh, Gopa and this and that. So he went, well, what's this? this you know? But he was an eloquent speaker. I mean, he was very eloquent. I mean, a statesman, you know, when he spoke, you knew he was educated. So it was after that time that I organized Decorative Artist Theater. And I must give credit to a lot of my colleagues who helped me to organize Decorative Artist Theater, like Joshua Howard. Just, and, 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 and for me, all my life, I've always interacted with everybody. So it, it has always been easy for me to draw Liberians together from different ethnic groups and all of that. So Joshua Howard, 
or, or Claude Langley, some of them big shots that they can't even give me a call. Claude Langley, Kathy Loco, Justina Gibson, Josephine Gibson, all these people are trained. And, 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 and during that time, President Torbert uh, 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 launched his national fund drive for the liberation of Southern Africa because in the 70s, those countries in those areas were fighting guerrilla warfare to, to, to redeem themselves. So he launched a fund drive to give them funding. That's some of the things that, that carried him too, you see, because he was supporting those people, to, uh, or the, the, the colonialists, and I mean, the, 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 the rebels and all of that, and they, they held that against him. But during that time when he did that, that's when I, I, I decided that now, this is where a citizen who has a special gift can give back to his country and do something that will support the government so that the government and the country can look good all around the world. So when Toba did that, I got inspired and I wrote the cheese of apartheid to portray the, the, the violence and, 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 and abuse of human rights in, in South Africa. And we put up the play. The first time we put up that play was in Sierra Leone at the State House. In Sierra Leone on Liberia's Independence Day, July 26, 1978, because we went on an international tour and we, and we performed at Ferro Bay College and at the City Hall in Sierra Leone. So my first interview as a Liberian playwright was not in Liberia. My first presidential performance was, uh, uh, was not in Liberia, it was in Sierra Leone. So it was after uh, that program when we performed for uh, S.R. Croman that uh, Ambassador uh, uh, Morris was ambassador for Liberia then. And he had, they, they, they has, you know, invited all the diplomats in Freetown to the, the performance. And Morris saw the play and he went and sent a telegraph to the president. He said, Mr. President, they got some young Liberians that are very, very smart and the way how they portray the history and culture of Liberia today before the international community here in, in, in Sierra Leone, Mr. President, you need to see that play. Mm -hmm. That's when we got our green letter. Those days when you get a green letter, then you know you inside now, then what's a who, what's a what? All right. So we All got right. that green letter, I got an invitation to perform at the uh, Executive Mansion Theater. That's a little theater they're in the executive mansion, all of that, yeah. you know, where we can do those kinds of things. We performed the chains of apartheid, and uh, he was very, the president was very impressed, and yeah. he saluted me for my, thanked me for my ingenuity, uh, yeah. but also- and we, we, want to salute, we want to salute you too. Okay, but, thank you but, so but much. as of today, is Decontip Artist still active, and what are you doing as of now? Oh boy, oh boy. Our 42nd anniversary uh, uh, on, on June 21st, we had a community engagement uh, uh, event here in Philadelphia at the Myers Recreation Center. And we, 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 are, we are addressing two special topics to help mankind to promote peace and reconciliation, not only here in the United States where the Decorative Artists USA is based, but also in Liberia, our homeland that needs it most. So um, the two programs have to do with uh, uh, traditional, oral traditional storytelling, oral traditional storytelling to preserve our traditional art and culture. Now you're talking about art and culture again, here we'll come, okay? Mm -hmm. To preserve our traditional art and culture. The storytelling process, how the, the, the minstrel tells the story. And after the minstrel tells the story, I mean, while he's telling the story, he can push in a little song there. Then he resumes his narrative. So therefore, as I was saying, so Spider then they ran and they were running beyond Spider. <laughs> Then all of a sudden you could just hear in the background, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> you see what it does? It 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 teases your imagination. 
Yeah. Yeah, it wakes you up. It's like, yeah. So, and that can be therapeutic. Imagine if you had a rough day, you were so exhausted, and you just happened to have gone to the theater to watch Black like, People Shakespeare do meow, meow, meow. <laughs> you know, you never know how much effect it has on you psychologically and all of that. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, just to answer that decorative artist thing, that's how uh, we went, you know, international through the president. And it's important for me to tell the Liberian people, especially those who are in power now, including my son, George, we are, and everybody else. Those kinds of things that we do that promote the image of the country, there are things that every leader wants to have in his corner. Whenever Toba traveled across the continent, he would carry the University of Liberia chorus or the chorus from Cottington, or you carry cultural ambassador, he would carry the, uh, what's that, Kenija, the national cultural troupe. He always carried the artistic, you know, or side of the country wherever he went. And that was something very good that he did. He ended up being one of our, uh, what's that, grand patrons. Uh, then, because he saw that show, he liked it. When Fred Akufu and Jerry Rollins came to Liberia, he invited us again to the, 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 the mansion to perform. He said, he told uh, uh, Akufu, he said, man, Akufu, Akufu the head of state before Jerry Rollins overthrew him and got there and all of that. But when Akufu came that time, Jerry Rollins was the, the flight commander. So he flew the plane that brought the head of state. So they all went to the show. And I met Jerry Rollins, he invited us. He said, man, the show was cool. You can come back. You know, I mean, can we invite you to Ghana? I said, yes. Not knowing the next week when they went, you know, he did the man business and mm -hmm. got there. That's, again, that's African politics. Mm -hmm. That part of the culture, some of it, that we have to, we have to deal with, we got to get rid of. We're talking about democracy. So, 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 with what the country art is doing now, we are doing non-violence. We are promoting uh, programs that deal with non-violence. And, and, and right now, we have established two chapters of decorative artist theater in Liberia. One is in Morovia with the University of Liberia students and other students from different universities in Morovia, about 25 college students who have committed themselves to promoting peace and reconciliation through music, through dance, through literacy, and they're gonna serve upon the completion of their training, they're gonna serve as peace advocates in the community. And hopefully when we can get some funding, we'll travel from country to country to promote peace and reconciliation and have productions, you know, entertainment for the people. You know, we gotta bring back life. That like we went life, we gotta bring it back together. So that's what we're doing and we need support for that. These kids, uh, Every every Sunday, uh, uh, I teach uh, the kids in Morovia online. From from mm -hmm. from on my side is twelve to two. On their side is uh, four to six. Mm -hmm. uh, and I teach them online. And what is interesting is that they have sacrificed so much to make this program a success on their own as volunteers. Of course, from the beginning, we told them that. We didn't have anything to offer them, but we could work together to bring about peace and reconciliation in the country. And as youth, you know, it was important for them to embrace it because it's the youth that they have used, that the warlords have used to fight this war. Right. Now we have to appeal to the youth to let them know that's not their role for them to fight war to put any crook in power. The youth got to live their lives as children. They got to mm -hmm. go to good schools like the way we want our children to go to good schools. So it's important that we, we teach the youth the things that they need to know to empower them so that when we are gone tomorrow, they will be able to take over from us. That's very Dr. important. Dr. Baba, it, you said you are, you are training them to be peace advocates. Yes. I mean, like, there's no more war. Why do you oh need my peace advocates? Goodness. Uh, uh, Daniel, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard did it. you hear what <laughs> I just said? Are yes, you kidding me? 
<laughs> oh my. We, 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 we are in the 40th year of our war. Since, like 19, since 1979, up to this time, nothing but war, hatred, deceit, jealousy, lies, forcing, washing our dirty clothes in the street before Ghanaians and Nigerians and Sierra Leoneans. I can't believe this. Mm -mm. I can't. And you, and you, and you think you, you, you telling me, Dennis, you know, you, you full of trouble. You know, you lucky. You way on that side and my hand can't reach there. Because if my hand could reach there, the first thing I'll do, I will west are you first. Where sir? Yeah. Then you'll cut your saying, when I tell me, say, the war over you over. No, it's not over. You know why it's not over? No. Because the perpetrators are the ones who are making the decisions. How did that happen? What's the constitution? What's the rule of law? Are there any lawyers in Liberia? That couldn't have happened during D12 and time. They would have gone to the international courts. Those gallant patriots. That's what we mean when we say patriots. They misuse words uh, 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 all the time to show their ignorance. But not everybody is ignorant. Patriotism doesn't mean to buy guns to kill up your brothers and sisters, your fellow compatriots. That's not patriotism. No, it's not. And it's illegal. And we must go by the rule of law to reinstitute justice and fair play in Liberia. That's very important. Good. So, uh, so we know, we've heard of the works you've done and the plays you've written. Um, are there other Liberian playwrights out there that we should know about or that we should be oh, okay. honoring oh, now? Just, before yeah, it's just a before, yeah, we want to go there. But before mm -hmm. we go there, let me tell you about other plays, like Law for Moema. Now, mm -hmm. my plays were not just only about socio-cultural, you know, or, or criticisms and all of that. Sometimes it was about showing the tradition, the love for my man, where a cruel prince falls in love with a fire, fire princess. Now what I'm doing, I'm drawing the different ethnic groups together because in Liberia, we have the mandate speaking people, we have the Kwa speaking people. So mm -hmm. the prince is from the Kwa speaking group and he falls in love with a princess from the mandate group. Now they get together, they have a child, the child is mandate, the child is Kwa. The Congo man, and the 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 the, the, the Pele woman get together to have a child. The child is a Pele Congo or whatever you want to call it. But not only that, but above all, the child is a Liberian. So that's what's very important. So prejudice comes as a result of one's ignorance about himself and the other in his lived world. We are so ignorant of one another. What does it hurt for me to ask Daniel? Daniel, who's your who's, who's your mother? Who's your mother, Daniel? Um, her name is Joyce Hawa Page Knuckles. Page. So mm -hmm. she's a page. So now well, that's a that's she, that's a piece of your and, and, and that's where the, the intermingling of culture comes in. So my mom is a, a Pella woman who was taken in by a page. And so okay. she grew up with a page. So she has that, I guess, Conga culture she grew up with. And then mm -hmm. she has her biological family and that Pele culture as well. So, okay, fine. So has she passed some of that to you? Uh, some, some. <laughs> so suppose suppose I said, who made you? Um, I think you asked me what my name is. No, no, no. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Oh. Oh, okay, okay. The only one I can remember see, is Black That's another thing that is gonna come that we're gonna come to. That's the education. That's also part of the culture. Yes, yes. Ah, <laughs> so, so, Dr. Baba, it look like there's a what role can this art and culture play now in you know, moving our country forward? Because 
what I'm hearing from you is everything is just linked to this art and culture. Yeah, the reason why it's linked to the art and culture, <clears throat> because in life, we all got gifts. I just told you how I got my gift, how I started. Daniel, can you recount some of the things I said about how I got my gift? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. So you, like had, <laughs> so you had an awakening in school. Yes. Yes. Yeah, where you had a, a, a vision mm -hmm. about uh, the intermingling of cultures and, and us learning about one another. And so that's how you got your calling to be a playwright. Yes. And that, not only that, but I live it. Yes, correct. I live it. I, 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 I'm married to a, uh, uh, an American Liberian. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not separated. I didn't go marry a woman. Even though if, if, if God wanted it to be that way, it would be that way. Mm -hmm. But what God ordains, no man can pull asunder. You can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So you see, so, so the reason why when I talk, I talk with faith and, and, and confidence is because I live what I preach. That's very important. It's important for a nation. Your leaders should live what they preach. And they should inspire. They should see the beauty of the Liberianness in each Liberian. No pick and choose. Mm -hmm. You can't do that as a leader. If you're just joining us, everybody this is got their skills. Liberia. Yes. Go so, ahead. So, so the question that you asked, Dennis, you know, uh, um, so that, that's where it is. So, so with the art and culture, the reason why we're talking about that. So I got this calling, and and not only that, but then I got the training. Because God, what God wants you to do, He will prepare you to, to do it. Mm -hmm. So when I finished, when I got because I tell you, I wanted to be a doctor. Can you imagine? I could have been a good doctor, maybe I don't know, but all the bluffing and things that you, you got to see, the science that you got to sit and be reading and all that kind of thing. <laughs> I didn't have time for all that one left. I was going to tell you to go. But what I'm saying is that I, I went, I started doing biology and other things. And, and when, when I go into class, when I go into the science uh, 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 building, you ask me, say, why are you going on this side? Because all, all the, everybody knew I pulled up place and then. I said, I'm going to my class, I got biology class. So what are you going to biology? You're doing the uh, 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 United Liberal College? I said, no. But all of a sudden, for some reason, hundreds of people started telling me the same thing. That what made me to change, I went to English. I did English and French. Oh, man, when I took English and French, forget it. I started wasting the wasa. <laughs> wasting wasa. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's how you make a show like this. That's how you make it very interesting. You don't get coming to all that raw uh, 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 book and all that kind of thing. We got culture. <laughs> we got expressions that appeal to us, to appeal to our emotions. When we say those expressions, they can inspire us as Liberians. And those are the expressions we want to keep. That's part of what I'm, I mean, or uh, 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 Dennis, when I talk about the culture, I think, because it goes to our root. We need to know who we are, where we come from. I can give you names of over uh, uh, what's that, 17 generations of my, my people. For example, let me give you an example. <clears throat> my mother's name is Where You Know God. Where You Know God is the daughter of Where You Know. Where You Know is the daughter of Rai Polia. Rai Polia is the son of Nuru Mani. Duru Mani is the, the uh, and a princess now, royalty now. Mm -hmm. Duru Mani is a uh, princess. Duru Mani was the daughter of Princess Kweli. Kweli was the daughter of, 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 of what's that, King Bolocelli. Bolocelli and uh, 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 Bolocelli was the father. His son, who was the last crown king before the, the, the Liberian government extended into the interior. His name was Badway Jilla. So my great-great-grandmother, Princess Betty, and King Badway Jilla were brother and sister. Were brother and sister. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Burocelli's father named Budu. 
and I could go and, and that whole family had a, a, a dynasty. Now when we talk about dynasty, we mean like where the family produces it. It lines of kings. The father moved from there, the son gets there, blah, blah, blah. It different times. So you're mm. talking about for each generation, 25 times eight, you're talking about over 200 years of rule of that mm. family. Those are rich information mm. that are not in our books, that are taught in the schools. Mm. So as a result, we see great people who pass by them and just think the, the piece of pancana. And, and, and that's the difference between us and people here. You see how they preserve all their cultural relics. But, but Dr. Baba, yes. if, if all those things have been tossed away, mm -hmm. how do you still call what we have our culture? Oh, your culture is your everyday living, brother. Okay. So, so there are other cultures that are developing like bro, you got to try put it one side because it is it, it's, it's, it's not it's not it's not uh, appropriate for the international image of the country. It's not appropriate for the national image of the country. It's not. Yeah, but what I'm asking of the country to build up the image of the country, you got to establish rule or law where no one is above the law. You can't run a country with somebody above the law. Can tell you say you can't come to to such and so county. You go and be godfather. Look at that kind of thing in our country. So Sir, whose culture is so whose culture is that? I'm about to move, man. Devin, 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 Conte, Devin, Sir, I G U. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are focusing on Liberian art and culture. Our guest is Dr. Joe Baba. He's the, uh, co he's the founder and the art director of the famous Deconti artists. Right now, Dr. Baba resides in Pennsylvania. That's Philadelphia to be specific. Back to you, Danielle. Yes. Um, so... Dr. Bakwa, what? Who are some other playwrights? Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that, please. Or uh, other playwrights uh, during my days when I was coming up would be like Konakaisu. Konakaisu is one of few Liberians who was trained, got his Master of Fine Arts in in theater from Boston University. So mm -hmm. you know he's way up there when it comes to that. And and when I was a student. Excuse me, after I graduated from, from high school, I heard about him. Tipote had introduced us, and, and he started his Blamandon Theater, which went very well. You know, I mean, but before that, he was one of those young ones that uh, I guess Tobo brought into the country, you know, to help. Uh, and, and so he was a director, I think cultural director at Keneja. And he did some nice productions. And one of the productions that I remember, you know, uh, we were trying to do one time was Kanda Goto. It's something about some uh, Gola, you know, history because uh, Kona has a you know, Gola background. You know, uh, even though during the, the Congo days, his name was uh, uh, James Roberts. When that little group of intellectuals came to start their thing, then they started taking different names because uh, 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 Tibote was uh, Rudolph Roberts. Mm -hmm. So when he came back down and he Tibote, he wearing Tibote teach, I mean, uh, what is it in, uh, uh, Sanders and all of that. So those were some of the things that created the change, dramatic ideological change, mm -hmm. ideological meaning, uh, 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 Somebody come here and talk about Mao. What we know about Mao? Lenin. And it wasn't easy. That would be a big talk. Uh, uh, Mussolini. Mm. Why are you going to talk about Mussolini and other kind of things? Why you can't come and talk about uh, 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 Chelli? So you, you're going and getting all these ideolo ide ideologies, mm -hmm. foreign ideologies, that don't match the culture 
of the country that doesn't match the way of life of the people we used to being free, coming to bring fascism here and, and, and communism here, so every so that you can ration what I eat and all of that. That's not who we are as Liberians. So the, ideolo the ideology is contrary to our cultural upbringing. That created a lot of confusion and it still creates a lot of confusion up to today's date. Hmm. Because some of the confusion, uh, uh, so now when you create, when you, when you develop this fascist and communist behavior, then you're supposed to be militant. Militant, comrade, this, that. Now you're supposed to be changing and losing your, your calm Liberian composure. And trying to be like somebody I, I can advise anybody is the worst thing for you to ever try to do. Hmm. That's a waste of time. Yeah. All That's that time you take you to, to look like somebody to be like somebody, you can take that time to develop yourself so that That's you can true. be a better person. We we're getting some comments and questions from Facebook. Okay. And, uh, if you are joining us too, you can call our number 706-684-0392. The first question says, uh, it look, uh, someone is asking when they're going to see you on Broadway. I, I, let me get the name. I don't think, okay, Tamba Menja. When are you, we going to see you on Broadway, Prof? You will see me on Broadway. That's a good question that the Tamba Menja asked because I'm a student from Cognito. <laughs> he will see me on Broadway when he when he subscribes to the decorative artist peace and reconciliation fundraiser for our program in Liberia. When when you when you, when, when, when when Liberians learn to support their own and be proud of their own, then definitely you will see me on Broadway because all it takes for me to go on Broadway is to go to Liberia, recruit the talents, train them professionally, and we can go wherever we want to go. Hollywood said we can go there. Mm -hmm. But it, it requires your support. One person can't just jump and go mm -hmm. to Broadway like that. You got to have support to go to Broadway. And, 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 and Liberians have not been forthcoming. For the past 45 years, I, I'm not saying that some people have not supported mm -hmm. you know, my work. But all of you, even you, the dentist, I said, now you, you can't tell me that you ever bought a ticket before. And that's what and, I'm about to ask you about. You there? I mean, I don't know when, when you ever heard about me. You know, that's 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 part of it. You know, so so you Liberians, you know, I, I like that kind of question because now I can put my mouth where my hand is. Uh, now, so tell us how you say by subscribing. Tell us how or someone can subscribe and how someone can support the work that the artist is doing. Okay, one of the things that you could do, you know, we have a website. You know, I know some people may not like the website thing and all of that, but we have a website that, you know, is, is decorativeartisttheaterinc.com. It's the whole thing spelled out, you know, but uh, I guess maybe one of the things that we can do, you know, uh, I can forward you that link as well okay. so that through your kind courtesy, you can you you can promote us and and share it with everybody else and also make the announcement Definitely. that yeah that we 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 what we're doing right now the, we we have trained almost fifty college students in Liberia they are supposed to be completing their training right now they are rehearsing their production their peace production that they want to put up when they launch the the peace drive I mean the the peace and reconciliation campaign in Liberia. So they need, we need money, you know, to support them for, for, for us to, to uh, revive the nonprofit status of decorative artists with the government uh, to, to, to make sure that we get a place for them to, to perform, uh, uh, put up publicity on, on radio and television, and not just on the publicity, but now if we can get funding, we can run a weekly program weekly drama series on, on radio in Liberia for them to listen to real fun and things that will help them to learn about their country and to inspire them to be together. That's the kind of spirit we need right now. After a post-genocide uh, 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 
uh, uh, conflict. The next thing you want to do is to help to trauma, uh, de-traumatize the people. Right. And the art is one of the best ways to do that because when we start singing some songs and start talk, talking some national uh, songs and things, they will, they will heal you. Now, let me give you a, a sample. Now, we're talking about song, right? Mm -hmm. Danielle, I didn't hear you. Yes. 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 <laughs> this, this thing has to be interactive within a mm -hmm. class, okay? okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. So now, for instance, if you know the words, please join me, okay? okay. Oh hill Liberia hill. Oh hill. Oh hill Liberia hill. Oh hill. Yes. Glory, <laughs> glory, <laughs> land of liberty shall all be ours. To new her name, great be her fame, and mighty be her power. There you go. Let me see. Long live Liberia. You got to hit, gotta hit the high note, doctor. Glorious liberty by God's command. This home of glorious liberty by God's command. I got two more comments. Pe, 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 pe. All right. <laughs> there is a, there is a, there is a viewer. Who was very impressed with the work, but yes, yes, they are coming. Okay. They said, you know all this, and you didn't put it in place from the beginning. You're getting Labrador suffering today. Whoa! <laughs> what, what, what's the name of the person? Uh, Joshua Colley. Oh, Colley, come on, man. Come on, you, Colley. Man, <laughs> you, Professor. Okay. Man, 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 Colley, wait, man. You cannot turn. <laughs> They think I've been doing for 45 years. They got what you all know, all that thing. Man, move from there, man. I told you. Uh, to, to a point, doctor. Yeah. You know, if I want to, I can go to the library or to the bookstore and read Shakespeare's plays. What about your plays? Can I purchase that in a book? Can we put it in a library? Is it recorded and written? Uh, most 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 of my plays have not been published yet. Most of them, they have been produced. They have been uh, uh, some have you know like for instance, um, uh, the frogs and black snake in Frogsville. Mm -hmm. The frogs and black snake in Frogsville. Uh, let me see. I think I should, ooh, I should have a copy somewhere here. Oh, okay. It's, it's a fireside fable, but it's a children's book. Mm. You know, it's something like this. Frogs and Black Snake in Frogsville. Okay. It's a children's book. Now, um, but uh, I, I self-produced it. So it wasn't public. It was published by a publishing company, but it was a publishing company that you have to pay for them to do it. Mm. And and some some of the stuff that I want to put on Amazon, Amazon, Amazon charges so much money that I have to get the money in order for them to do it. So one of the things that Liberians can do that uh, uh, because I, I have the material that we can use to produce textbooks, Liberian textbook. This, this book here could be a very good book for little, you know, first graders or whatever. It's because it has, it has pictures of frogs. It has pictures of the village and all of that. That's what we mean about culturally relevant, you know, or education. I got frogs there eh, and all of that. So when you talk about frogs and things, the kids in Liberia know about frogs and all of that. But you talk about buffalo, you know, it's a different thing. You, you're kicking the child's psyche off guard, <laughs> you see? And that's what, that's the type of education they've been providing. When you're providing education for people, you have to be very careful how you provide it because... It can it can affect the mind. 
Yes, we have a comment here from George Toto. He says, the way history was taught in our various schools was disappointing and it is still going on today. They spend more time on teaching Western culture in our school system than Liberian culture. Yeah, so, now, so this is where I can help. But in order for me to do it, you gotta support it. It costs money. I spent millions of dollars for the past 45 years trying to promote the culture of the country and the people just, all of you just sitting there just looking at me like this. <laughs> The, 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 the big question you ask me, when, when you put on the nice play, oh my God, to put up a play? You got to pay for the script. You got to talk to people that, uh, that you're not paying for them to be inspired, for them to even do it for you and all of that. You got to pay for the whole. You got to pay for everything. Everything you got to pay for it. And you're asking me, when are you going to put up the next play? I thought you were going to say, oh, uh, I'm sending you a check. <laughs> That's what civilized people do. That's how the people here were able to preserve their culture. They have people who support the arts so that their culture can continue. But like you strangulate their art. Mm -hmm. You kill your, yourself because you don't want to be yourself. You, you hate yourself. You look at yourself in the mirror, you, you hate yourself. But, you but hate why, your, is, you why hate is that, Dr. Obama? Lack of self-knowledge. Where does that come from? Why is that? It comes from, from mis miseducation. What do I mean by miseducation? Okay. Miseducation means, for instance, where I know, or uh, 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 Daniel, you, your, 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 your mom comes from Carisburg, and I'm teaching mm -hmm. you in the class and telling you that Carisburg is the worst place for you to ever go. <laughs> you don't know any difference, you're just a child. So you develop that concept that cares about the worst place to go when your mom says, Oh, Daniel, let's go to Cares Bell. Go see No, I don't want to go to Cares because it's the worst place to go. Where did you get that idea from there? Sometimes from what you read, mm -hmm. from what you, you watch on TV, you know, from people that come to you who, who may be, uh, 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 how they call it, uh, 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 segregationist or whatever it is, you know, know this diff different kinds of things. So that's how it starts. Now, now, uh, it's it, it, another thing, uh, Dennis, because you're bringing in another issue here with education, you know, and, and, and when you talk about education now, this is where we come to, for instance, education. Somebody was telling me that uh, he part, I mean, his part in the hinterland, the power were not educated. But, you know, so and so person was educated because he could read, read and write English. Mm. That's not even correct. Mm. You are educated, you got MFA, PhD, this and that, blah, blah, blah. You can't even go in your environment and build, take the, the objects for the environment to build a house. The man, you say that an educator can go and build a house. You can go in the, in the, in the bush, get the sticks, get the, the, the rope, you get the, the palm, this and that, pull the mud from the, the ground, pull his walls together, blah, 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 he got a house. Mm -hmm. Today, we are piece of whatever it is, you don't got no place to stay. You can't even build a house. The man that can feed himself, you hear you running behind Paul Sawa. That's, 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 that's the effect of the type of education you got the man that you say not educator, he's an educator in his immediate environment. Yeah. You're making maximum use of it. So now yeah. what they try to do, the mis education now, they try to say, oh, you do that in a country tree. <clears throat> you tell, you tell, you're describing the dignity of labor as country where you can feed yourself, you can be self-independent. So you, you, you don't want to be a country, so you don't make farms anymore. You don't brush farm anymore. That's, that, that's missed education now. I'm diverting you from being the industrious person you were to bringing you to be a dependent, the industrious, independent person you were. Now I'm, I'm using education to, 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 by denigrating your culture and beliefs to make you become dependent person. 
So, so our society now, because of the education, because it was not industrials, we are dependent. Hey man, what time America will set up grand man? What time China will set up a, a one shed low of, 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 of Pusawa rice? That's the result of the education. The education should be able to motivate the citizens to create. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, go ahead, Dennis. Let me not take up your time. Right. Yeah. We have another comment here yeah. because you were talking about support. Yes. So, uh, darling, we would say, how about you, Dr. Baba, now? Showcase on Facebook, on a Facebook live show, in order to showcase your work and also create awareness. In other words, what effort, what are you doing to promote what you're doing and create awareness? For instance, Facebook live show, you can do that. That's what she's suggesting. Oh, yeah, but, but she just uh, tell her, I say, may the Lord be with her because definitely I, 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 it's something that's in the immediate plan. Because there are two things, parallel things that are going on right now that I want to let the public know about. It's the Kuka Tunnel Peace and Reconciliation Initiative in, Incorporated, KPRI, was recently established, you know, by 50 Liberian, prominent Liberian citizens, including myself. We all came together and we felt that it was necessary for us to, to have an organization that be devoted to promoting peace and reconciliation in Liberia. So, for instance, what the country artist theater is doing right now, you know, that's something that falls within the framework of the KPRI to, to promote peace and reconciliation. We have members here in America, in, in uh, Europe, uh, and also back home in Liberia. So, so uh, uh, there, there are plans for me to definitely, you know, be on uh, Facebook Live as I'm doing now, and I will be doing that soon. Since you know, we got people who are going to be graduating, we will do that. So, please, there, darling, I say thank you so much uh, for that comment. You know, uh, it's a source of inspiration for me, and I will definitely use that thing. But my plea is that when I get there to sit down and talk all this rich stuff and all of that. You must learn to support it by sending funds that we, I will use to put the people in the field to do these things. Right. To, be, to use, to buy the airtime, to, to put it on radio in Liberia so people can listen to it. That's why you do whatever money you send, it will be used for its intended purpose. I've mm -hmm. been doing this for 45 years without your support. Now it's time for you to support it so you can go mm -hmm. on pretty soon. I'm getting older. I'm and a Dr. Now. Dr. Baba, to, uh, to add to that, one support people can also give is about getting on your Facebook live show to watch it. Because yes. anything that is educational does not receive the kind of view the politics and the other things get. So I just want you to, as you plan, that other support people can give. But there's one more comment I want to read before, on Facebook before turning it over to Danielle. Kevin Soko says, Liberia's founding fathers refused to accept Liberia's culture or cultural tradition and values. They took it as witchcraft. Instead, they introduced the American culture and values for 100 plus years. Your comment, Dr. Baba. Yeah, that's, that, that's good. That's, that's a good analysis. What that tells you, you know, uh, uh, in the Liberian society, what is important for you to understand is that our, our development as a people, as a race, you know, has different stages. One, it has the pure traditional stage, which starts from the beginning of time where God created man, you know, or, or in his image in Eastern Africa, where we originated from. And, and during that time, whatever we did was authentically African, no outside influence whatsoever. It so, so that kind of setting is called a pure traditional African setting. Okay, that's a stage. So our ancestors lived that stage. They interacted with other people as men developed and the population grew. And, and but they still maintain that the traditions that they brought from the East and they came to Liberia. That's a pure traditional stage. When European explorers and other people from different cultures and races 
began to explore the shores, the green coast. Then there began to be an interaction between our traditional culture and Western culture. But that was also worsened with the slave trade. So the slave trade took some blacks back, I mean, here to the United States and the Western world. And after more than 500 years, when they have all been transformed. You remember I talked about culture being the overall, the overall arch. <clears throat> now all those things that were part of them, you know, the food they ate, the languages they spoke, their beliefs and practices, they came here and they stripped all those things off them. Their history, they stripped it off them, made them naked, so to speak. So all they knew now was that they were reformed human beings, black skin, white minds. So they come to their own brothers and sisters after 600 years. And you remember what I said about a kid going to Kirisburg and, and putting it in the class and the reaction. So now that reaction while they were here in the West was that, oh, those people there, they are bad people, they lie your people and this and that, blah, blah, blah. So they came with their own mental perception of the indigenous people that they met here. That's number one. So their coming begins a new era called the cultural conflict era. Cultural conflict. Now we're going to have some conflicts. Why? One, the settlers came with the Western democracy governmental structure. Okay? Uh, three but separate equal branches of government. When you look on the traditional side, as I told you before, we inherited our governance system for our ancestors in the East, which is the dynasty system. One person is king after he leaves, the other person gets there. We don't go and get in line, form lines to, 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 to vote, to cast votes and all of that. It was done by, by, by ascription. Leadership was done by ascription and not by achievement. Ascription meaning that because my father was king, so when he passes, you know, it passes on to me. That's ascription. But achievement will be where I want to be president of Liberia, and I got to lobby for your support, lobby for Dennis's support. Dennis, yes, then when I'm running, you will vote for me? <laughs> Depending on what you're running for. <laughs> All right. What is it that you want? Because anything you want, I want to get you, chief. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a, a, a good country. Okay, all right, but then you have it then. Then you have it. <laughs> so say one. So say so none. <laughs> you see, I know you the thing. Uh, yes. James Momba is writing from, uh, he, he said, thank you, Prof. I'm consumed by your historical record. Do you have these resources written? Hope we can reach some of the poems in this time. Okay. I think uh, about your, your work. Yeah, uh, again, you know, I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the encouragement and all of that, but it will, it will really be helpful if you know, can send some contribution, you know, send some money. The money can do everything because all these things that I have, you know, we want to make sure to store them. You may say, well, it's, just, it's your property, so therefore you should do it. Well, that's why it's taking all this time and you don't see it like that because to put it out there costs money. To keep it going, it costs money. To keep me going as a, as a Liberian art, that money. You don't see the money in me. You don't see it. You don't see how it costs money. To keep my hair like this, all of this, that money. <laughs> yeah, but because when they see me, they say, yeah, they like rent, they like rent puppet or, or they like rent playwright. I mean, it looks nice, man. Look at the kind of clothes you got on. That money. Mm -hmm. To promote the image of the country, that money. When I go and mom my colleagues, when they drink it wine, I tell them I sort of drink some too. To so show that we got class. <laughs> money. You see? Yes. Um, so, we're so, so please, the... please, please, you please support this thing. I beg you. Mm -hmm. If you're supporting, you'll be happy because you'll be able to watch Liberian movies, 
your people, when you go to Liberia, you, you will hear programs on the air, mm -hmm. educating the people and, and bringing people together. Our, our aim is to unite all Liberians. That's, that's, that's my aim. That's my role. Well, you got to give me the support that, to do it. We're, we're nearing the end of the show. Hello. All right, we, we have a, we having some problem with Danielle audio. Oh, okay. But uh, what she says is basically we are nearing the, uh, we are winding down the show now. Okay. So let, let's, uh, let's wrap up. I, I wanted you to just go over briefly some of the earliest form of librarian art that you can remember. Who were the people involved way, way back? Well, well, I don't know about way, way back, you know, because uh, uh, you talk about way, way back, because from my background, I come from, I come from Eastern Liberia, you know, uh, we got uh, some, some, some artists, traditional artists that they said were good, you know, in those days, you know, one or two names I can remember, you know, mm -hmm. that would be it. Uh, when it comes to things like drama and stuff, you know, like when we were asking about other Liberian playwrights, we talk about I talk about Conan Kasu. There was a, a Lester Lester Parker. Lester Parker was also um, one of the dramatists too. He put up some plays. Then, of course, you got a uh, Woman Bright, Woman Bright Neil, uh, another you know uh, producer as well. You know, who put up a lot of plays as well. Uh, other artists. Uh, I know uh, Dogba Karanda's father, I learned, was a, a dramatist in the 20s and all of that. You know, so those are people whose names I can remember. And then, of course, you know about Bati Moore. Right. Yeah, Bati Moore uh, is a, a legend. Uh, he's someone that uh, mentored me, you know, as, as a father. You know, so... <clears throat> uh, uh, in the traditional setting, for instance, you got people like Babe. Babe was a traditional Liberian uh, crime mistral. He would sing, you know, uh, with the sasa and all of that. Those kinds of, of things. Uh, uh, back in the day, ZTT, uh, um, uh, Yata Zo, you know, those were, were artists, you know, outstanding Liberian artists. Today. Melinda Jackson Parker. You know, Cousin Mosquito. Cousin mm -hmm. Mosquito was my old mom. She used to put a lot of makeup on her face. You know that when Cousin Mosquito kisses you on the jaw, all the, lip, the, the uh, what's that, lipstick, everything can remain on your jaw. <laughs> that was Cousin Mosquito. But she, she was a congresswoman. She was in the House of Representatives and she could play piano. And she could make her own folk songs. Don't marry the girl from Sino. Don't marry a girl from Sino. No, 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 whatever it is we're talking. Then, then she got a song called Mosquito. Mosquito, check, 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 check. And man, you couldn't tell Cousin Mosquito that she wasn't playing music. Oh, yes. But she was a legendary person, very, very affectionate. She was the one that gave me my first cadet job at the Ministry of uh, Information. She saw me what I said, hi, ah, Cousin Mosquito. She said, hi, baby boy. And you come here with your little cute self. What are you doing here? I said, oh, I came to come look for a vacation job. I said, come here, come with me, come with me. And she said, come on, let's go. She told me straight to Barty most of it. Say bye. And said, yes, congresswoman. She said, well, this my little boy. And take, take this boy, let him do some kid there, job here. And that was it. I got my job. Hmm. Cousin Mosquito, thanks to Cousin Mosquito. Let's see if you can do this little dance. Oh, 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 my God. <laughs>
make little sounds, you know. The, the sounds and things we make, we make those sounds to invoke the spirits of our forefathers. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, yo, here, you know, like that. You yeah. see? So, okay. so the dance and thing, they, they mean something. They, they, they tell a story. We don't just dance because we want to dance in Africa. When we dance, we're telling a story. Therefore, it's what good. Here, there is like a, a warrior, you know, going to war and all of that, and he's he's scaring scaring off his enemies. Right. He's invoking the, the supernatural powers to overcome his enemies. You see, so that our concept, our belief, all those things. If you live and you say you want to be a uh, 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 Tom Sawyer, mm -hmm. you know, what connection does it have with mm -hmm. your life? All right. True. So what, what are your final thoughts for our audience tonight on Liberia and its culture? My, my final thoughts are that I would like to appeal to all Liberians that we should promote peace and national unity. I know that people are in denial, but they should stop being in denial because Liberia is not the Liberia of yesterday. Since 1980, the rulership of the country has changed, switched from the minority to the majority. If you think that because you, your people are not in power, that you will create all this havoc and hardship for all of us, then you need to think twice. Because we have seen that though the, the indigenous people criticized and said that they were oppressed, Congo people oppressed them, they didn't do this, they didn't do that, country people have gotten there and they're doing worse things. So the best thing for us Liberians is not about the country and the Congo, but for us to get together and choose the right leaders that we can all work together. We have to work together because there's a national park. Everybody is important. Everybody brings a taste to the national soup park. The Congo people, the country people, everybody put together to make the Liberian soup. We are, it cannot be a real Liberian soup. Mm. So we should stop being in denial and look for new strategies by which we can live together. That's very important. I see that people make that uh, uh, effort or uh, uh, things that happened since 1980 or whatever is they dragging it and dragging it and dragging it. And after raising millions of dollars to kill 250,000 people, all of that, you should have you should think twice to continue to do what you're doing to your country. It's very important. 40 years, 40, 40 years of my life. So, so political strife, forcing, killing one another, people running and going from place to place. 40 years of my life. You take 40 years from me, I'll be young, black one, young, young chicken. 40 years. Got to go through this. Children born in this era don't even know about peace and rule of law because we got the wrong people in the wrong positions. We're teaching the children different things. A group to go and kill up the whole village and you will be senator. You will be president. Mm -hmm. Our value system. That's why culture is important, uh, 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 Ja. That's why culture is important, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Our value system is important. Those days we, we, we have pride for our, our family. Our family name, you say, Baba, the name, Baba, you want to defend that name. You don't want to do anything wrong for your whole family to look bad. But these days people don't care. They still with, 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 with ease. You're not a shame. They, you walk with big ring all on your finger, part, part of our money all on your finger. So who take that, your, your finger and all of that? You won't have fingers. <laughs> so it's very important that we live together in peace yep. and harmony. Mm -hmm. My role, my contribution, my contribution 
will be that I will promote peace and reconciliation. I will try to extend decorative artist theater services to the people in Liberia. If we can get support, you will definitely be able to get a weekly or uh, uh, drama programs on, on the different radio stations, TV stations and all of that. And definitely we go from counties to counties to perform. We can do all the things. That would be my contribution. Your okay. contribution, uh, first of all, open, your contribution will be for your government to, to be open to the, the, the cooperation, to be open to the programs and things, and to, to facilitate so that we can be able to reach the people and talk about peace and reconciliation. That's very important for the government. Okay. It's also important that the people themselves embrace peace and re reconciliation. What is this hatred all about? Why you hate yourself and you hawking? I, I see you hawking the Lebanese man. Oh, oh, Sahi, how are you doing this and that? As soon as you see me, oh, where you say? Like I'm some Bugu man. Why we do that to ourselves? That's very important. We would like to help, but also the government and officials and everybody else, the citizens, we all have to work together to make it happen. And, 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 and uh, as I said, I have a contribution to make and that will be my contrib contribution with Decorative Artists Theater and the Kukatana Peace and Reconciliation Initiative. We will continue to work and promote Liberia because that's our home. Those are things that I would like to leave, you know, with the audience tonight. My love and peace to everybody. Let's work together. Visit my Facebook page and read uh, uh, things that we put up, the updates and all of that. Those of you who are in Liberia, Decorative Artist Theater may be performing in August and September. Uh, the group in Morovia will perform in Morovia and the one in Kipamas will perform in Kipamas to launch our Peace and Reconciliation and Cultural Awareness Program nationwide. Thank you very much for your support, your prayers and everything. I'm looking forward to coming to Liberia soon to visit all of you and for us to make plans to begin the peace process, to promote peace and reconciliation among all Liberians. This is my plea to you, my fellow countrymen and women. I pray for you, your safety, your good health, and everything. I pray for the president of the country, the vice president, the officers, this, uh, the, the officials of government, <clears throat> everybody. Pray for the soldiers, the police, the security system, the immigration. Pray for everybody that Liberia will be a safe place for all of us, for us to work and live together. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dr. Bagwa. We appreciate you uh, joining with us today and sharing your wealth of knowledge with our audience. So thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it was my pleasure. And thank you so much, Dennis, for, for supporting your uncle. <laughs> And we want to thank our viewers across the globe for watching. Next week, we're going to continue with our knowing more about Liberia. Our guest is going to be Dr. Tyre. He will be discussing the religious beliefs in Liberia. That will be our traditional beliefs, our traditional religion, Islam, Christianity, and a few other religions in Liberia. Keep tuned. We're going to be doing this for the entire month of July. And happy pre-26 to everybody. Yeah. Our 26 on you, Doc. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 would, I would send your 26. You, you, want me to, you want me to email it? Please do. <laughs> so on behalf of all of us here at Focus on Liberia, we want to say thank you so much for joining. Good night and God bless. Amen. Thank you, guys. <laughs>